And we breathe. Big cleansing breath in. And release. Again, in. And release. And one more time, get ourselves fully in the moment. Breathe in. mind's eye, I want you to look very high, high in the sky. This light that's coming to you is very pure, very divine. And it is in a huge urn, a jug, just like the Grecian jug. And in it is golden light, golden light. It's like liquid honey. And it's pouring down it's coming down, 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 and you can see it cascading, and it's coming into your higher bodies. And you feel it's touching your crown now. And as this golden light touches your crown, you're gonna see a burst of violet. This ball of violet appears, and it's settling right in your crown. And you can feel it now as it flows down, down to your brow chakra. And here, it's like a lapis, a lapis lazuli blue. And it's there and it's swirling around your head, awakening your, awakening your third eye. And you feel the light pour down down to your throat and in your throat you feel this beautiful beautiful light blue it's so sparkly and it's a ball right there in the center of your throat and it's cleansing and purifying your words you will speak more pure words from this point on and then this light continues to pour and it's covering you it's entering every part of you every ligament, every sinew every blood cell every minute cell of your being is filled with this liquid golden light as it cascades down your arms filling your fingers Cascading over your chest, down your back, and there, deep in your heart, you see the pink light. And if you look very closely, you'll notice that that ball of light actually is shaped like a heart. And it's awakening your heart. So you can love unconditionally all those around you. And it pours down down to your tummies, to your solar plexus. And you feel that yellow, deep golden yellow. It's filling you, your power center. You feel strong and powerful. And it continues to flow down your, your being into your sacral chakra. It's a burst of sparkly lights bursts of orange all oh, floating around in this gold and it's filling you with all this creative energy and you're becoming calmer and more relaxed as it continues to flow down down into your root chakra with beautiful, beautiful red light so rich, so ruby red, right at the very, very center, right at your spine, right at the tailbone. And that golden light continues now, and it's pouring down your legs, to your knees, around your knees, and down your legs, and 
filling your feet. You feel all tingly in your toes as it continues down deep into Mother Earth. You feel it going through all the layers, all the very deep layers of Mother Earth. And this light is also healing and purifying for her. As we ground ourselves at the center of the Earth, find that crystal at the center of Mother Earth and loop it around. And you bring it back up. And we're going to breathe it up to our feet again. Need breath. And release. Light's coming up now. We're feeling relaxed. We're feeling aware of all as the light continues to come up our legs. We know we're preparing ourselves for the words the words of spirit through cry on as the light continues to flow up to our hips and now up through our, our tummies to our trunk right up to our neck up into our face you feel it floating right out through the top of our heads and right back to source and we are a complete and divine tube of light, golden light. Knowing that you are worthy, worthy of God's love, worthy of your own love, knowing that you are worthy to be here at this time, knowing that your light is needed, you have much work left to do. And as we settle, and we breathe ourselves back and release again we're going to breathe in and release and one more time a big breath in and release and we know we're leaving this place tonight leaving imprints of light on the ground, everywhere we walk, everywhere we touch. And now you are ready for the next voice you hear will be that of Cryon. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And who would believe it? That sweet voice of spirit could be presented to you this way, to your heart this way. Who would believe it? If I told you I knew who was here, would you believe that? The grandeur of every soul in the room is known to me personally. God can do that. There are those who would say, it just can't be this way. It has to be the man pretending in the chair. It just can't be this way. It can't be, it can't be that easy. For spirit to speak to me in this way, just it's got to be something more. And yet we say to you, dear one, as we have said almost every time we sit in the chair, that all of your scriptures were, were written in this way. It's not the word of God that you look at and read. Not even the red letter edition. <laughs> it's a word of men. It's a word of women. It's humanity. 
it's channeling. Most precious words you would cling to. The history of spirituality written by men and women under the influence of the love of God. And I'm here to say to you, I know who you are. There are those in the room, first timers. And what I mean by that, first time you've sat in front of me in a meeting live. There are those who have heard the voice, but not the energy. And then there are those who've heard neither, and this is the first time, and you're still questioning, is it real? And this is where I ask you, what have you got to lose? For these moments we are together discussing these things, what have you got to lose to open your heart and ask? Do you believe in God? Then ask, Dear God, dear Spirit, is this really so? And I'll tell you that higher self of you, yours, if you let it, if, if you let it, it'll take your hand and say, Listen, not only is it so, it's about time you heard it. And that's why you're in the chair. And you know it. You know, right now, before we get into the subject matter, right now, I'll tell you there is an entourage in this place that is sitting upon you with an energy of a dispensation that is beyond what you'll have when it's over. Now, what I mean by that that you can do more right now in this group than you could ever do by yourself. And that's because there are those here who knows what they know what's going on. They're anchoring this room and this place to allow for one thing right now. Right before we start, I address the ones who've come for healing. They say, I know who you are. You pretend you're here for other things, but you know why you're here, and so do I. So do I. And that means you've got a direct line right now to Spirit. Spirit does not want you to suffer. You hear that? Did you get that? And if that's not what Spirit wants, perhaps it's not what you should want either. What is your attitude? What do you expect? Old soul, there is no reason for you to continue with the illness. I know who's here. Let us touch you. Let us touch you. And let this be the night of the beginning of the rest of your life that is different than when you came. This is in your power, your power. Are you going to reach out and touch that hand or not? Dear human being, there are some who are saying, I don't know what's happening on the planet. I don't like it. I've got questions here. I hear them coming at me. And some are wringing their hands with frustration. I know what Mr. Carroll says, but I'm feeling worried. <laughs> what is it that's going on? And so I'm going to address this. Does the word recalibration mean anything to you? And how would you define it? To recalibrate yourself, your spirituality, your energy. To recalibrate those things around you, your government, your economy, the way things work. What does that mean to you? And I will tell you that this is what you are experiencing at the moment. There is an energy that is pouring into this planet. The energy of the shift that we have told you about. The reason I am here. You're in the middle point of a 36 year galactic alignment. I am here. You've had so many things occur. 
you're recalibrating. In the country just below you, which my partner is part of, they are suffering a recession. And there are many who are complaining. And it's hard. And we say to you again that this recalibration is going to bring the economy back with less greed. With systems that are in place to keep the things happening that benefited only the rich. And it's time for that kind of shift, is it not? And that's what's going on. And some of your lives are in turmoil, and I know who's here. You're questioning the very essence of who you are. I know who's here. And I want to say this congratulations. To the country right below you in the recession, I want to say congratulations. If you have the courage to celebrate the difficulty of recalibration. That is what's going on. It's not comfortable. It doesn't feel good. Oh, dear souls, this is the time you've waited for. I would love to take you back just for a moment and review with you the moment of the wind of birth when you came into this earth and I was there and there was so much going on at that moment such a beautiful energy that goes into that second when you enter the birth canal and all you are is forgotten and the grandness is forgotten and the part that you are God is forgotten and willingly you come in and start this earth journey again right before you came in all those who stood around you including myself said this may be the time all those lifetimes for this when the earth could shift when you actually could go to a place where you call upon the seed brothers and sisters of the seven and can say we made it and that's where you're headed that's where you're headed old souls in this room can turn this around or not they can accelerate it they can slow it down you may represent right here the core of this very city the light workers that that are here some some new some who have been in a long time, all equal in your ability to shine light in a dark place. Here's another question, dear Cry. Well, what's going to happen? Is there really going to be three days of darkness? Is there, is there going to be planetary turmoil? Is there going to be doom? And the answer is no. And we say this again, whatever you have heard, even from those who are teachers of the highest order, if it seems like a negative thing, look at the metaphor. Spirit speaks to prophets in metaphors, always has. It is for you to see. Metaphors are the only way that spirit communicates to certain individuals that can see that which is coming. So do not see the literal, but look through it and around it and look at that which is discerned by that spiritual core which you have, which touches the other side of the veil and know it is safe. These are times of change, not of doom, not of gloom. The question is asked, well, what is exactly going to happen on December 21st? 2012. And so I asked the question of you, where? Where are you talking about? And you will say, well, I'm talking about Earth. And I'd say, no, no. Earth is in two days always. Where? 
And so again I tell you this. The center of time as measured by spirit on earth when it gives dates. When you talk about solstice, when you talk about equinox, when you talk about the things that occur on a certain hour, a certain day, a certain time. Measured from Lemuria. Not London. Lemuria. Right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. You know what's going to happen on 2012? December 21, celebration. By every old soul who wishes to look at the clock and figure out when that day occurs in the middle of the Pacific Ocean where Lemuria sits, celebrate. Celebrate the middle of the alignment that you started 18 years ago, 17 for you now. And the things which have occurred that have changed the earth. And my partner has listed some of them. Some of them that are taking place, some of them have not yet taken place. Celebrate. That's what's going to happen. Now some of you have said, yes, but I've heard so much darkness trouble a splitting of the planet even we've heard <laughs> oh there is a splitting of the planet going on right now and you know what I'm speaking of it's a metaphor it's dark and light it's old and new can't you feel it can't you feel it I want you to look around because you're going to get more of this and this is what is going to happen in the next 18 years you're going to have an old energy of earth go kicking and screaming because they're not getting their way. This is the way it used to be. Watch for it. It's already happening. The old guard is not liking what they're seeing. Do you think that the dictators in question right now ever expected what is taking place? Do you really? What about the ones to come? What about the ones who are right now sitting pretty and thinking nothing is going to happen? They're next. <laughs> oh, you wait. It's imminent. One by one, they fall. Watch for old energy politics. Try to reestablish itself and it will lose. Even the things that would raise their heads again that you have cast away will try again. For they feel they're being pushed out. And they are. Watch for the, some of the seniors, the leaders of countries right now, make odd statements which are not unifying at all. They're separating. And they'll fall on deaf ears and they will be seen unusually. What are they doing? Because the consciousness of the planet is starting to recognize old energy for what it is. And it's the first time, dear ones, and you're here to see it. And that causes chaos. And so there'll be a time in these next two decades that are difficult. When you literally can see the fight between the old energy and the new. And I'll tell you right now, as we measure potentials of the consciousness of the earth, they don't have a chance. The ball is rolling and has been for 17 years and you've seen it. And for those who are not privy to what I've given my partner in his lecture. This may not make sense to you. But the planet has changed dramatically and greatly. In ways that are amazing and no one predicted and no one expected. That you're unifying continents and putting them together. Very slowly. And you're all part of that. And yet you're saying to me, well, it still doesn't feel good. <laughs> That's why we call you light worker. 
because you're working the issue. All right. Now we get down to the questions, don't we? What can I do, cry on, to create peace in my life over these things? To not worry about these things. To push my light into places without being invasive. If it's true I'm an old soul, if it's true I was waiting for this lifetime, what am I supposed to do? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> this is so exciting. This is so exciting. Instructions to the wise. The old souls in front of me have been through so much, have endured so much, have had their time of exaltation, of suffering, of motherhood, of warriorhood. You fought the battles of the planet. You've left your footprints in foreign lands. And here you are. Here you are in a peaceful place, in a peaceful country, without the turmoil, without the suffering. You think that's an accident. It puts you here ready to work. It is not an accident. But you're not going to do anything at all, and you're not going to have an effect on the planet, and you're going to be ineffective unless you get a handle, a grip, a conquering attitude on fear. Because fear will shut you down. Best light worker in this place, even my partner, fear will shut you down. And we say it again, number one, eliminate fear in your life. And if you want to know how, I'll tell you how, because fear is a paper tiger when it comes to love. Take the hand of the higher self as it reaches out right now. There's a seed of God in you. This was implanted in you for now. I gave my partner the information. He has published it. Why don't you look at it? It's inside all I get. You may not believe it. You may not feel worthy. It is there. If you just look, what have you got to lose? Isn't it time to climb out of the fear, the depression, the uncertainty? And have the self-confidence that you are a piece of what is being planned here. You're the troops and you've been trained. The old souls have the training for the wisdom to bring the light to fruition right where you sit. When you go to work, when you go home, wherever you're going. As your body heals itself because it's touching the face of God. Right now, you can shed light. You may say, I'm too weak to do any of these things. No, you're not. No, you're not. I know who's here. I know what you're going through. You know you're not. This is why you came, and it's time to see it. Oh, dear human being, you're the warrior, and you've been trained, and you're ready to go. Don't let fear shut you down. Take the hand of the higher self and go forward. Feel the love of God right now, surging through you, smiling at you. Smile back, I dare you. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's number one. <laughs> number two, have a more compassionate spirit. Compassion is the catalyst for peace on earth. Unification is the tool of compassion. What is it that you haven't been able to unify in your life? Who is it you haven't been able to unify in your life? Who is it you won't talk to? I know who's here. I dare you to contact them and say, doesn't matter what's happened. It doesn't matter if you ever call me back. It doesn't matter. 
I just want to let you know I care about you and you're important to me. That's it. That will elicit compassion in you and in the other person, no matter what they've done, no matter how hard-hearted they are. I know who's here. That'd be a good bridge to start, wouldn't it? And it's hard. To say it'd be easy, that's a hard one. I dare you. And I will tell you, if you could cross that bridge of swords, <laughs> that's just the beginning of what you'll then be able to do. And you're going to feel different because you did it. And you're going to come away going, wow, what is that I feel? And I'll tell you, it's the old soul welling up in you. And all of the wisdom that you've gleaned through the ages starting to paste itself back up on you. Self-worth. Standing tall with God. Feeling the love that has always been there. Now I'm talking to souls right now who have walked their lives with angelic energies next to them. And you've never even said, thank you. You've never even said, hello, because you don't believe it. I know who's here. I know who I'm talking to. And you know too, don't you? You walk out of this place still an unbeliever. And you may, and there'll be no judgment. And those angels will walk right out with you as they've all been through your life. Just waiting for you to see them. So they can help you in the things that you want help in. You have got so much on your side, dear human being, dear old soul. That was number two, compassion. Number three, you've got to change your attitude. Expect solutions that are positive. Expect synchronicity every day. You have problems. I know who's here. You don't know how to solve them. I will tell you this. There is synchronicity that can occur with your permission and potential that you cannot imagine. And it'll solve them. If you allow it. There are those even here, old souls, light workers, even healers, who wallow in their own misery. I know who's here. And spirit hears you say these things. Well, I knew that would happen. Well, I'll never get ahead. Same old, same old. I know you. Is it about time you change that? Expect positive solutions. Do not look back on what you think are negative things. Instead, celebrate them all. For they are part of the growth that is you, is part of the God that is you. I dare you. Celebrate those things in your life which you have seen as negatives. Go back. Hold a ceremony. Convert them in your brain to positive things. And you might say, ah, crying, you really don't know what I've been through. I don't think I can do that with that particular person. Oh, he was part of the plan, dear one. Don't you think I know who was here? Part of the plan. And right now, you're aware of it. What are you going to do with it? You can let it fester all your life. I know who's here. This is what a light worker could do. And the planet changes as you do it. And then the final one, old soul. The belief of what I am telling you is true. Without remembering, without proof, curl up and go inside 
Is it possible that running through my DNA is an Akashic record that is hundreds and hundreds of years, if not thousands deep? Is it possible I might have even been in Lemuria? Is it possible? Is it possible? And I want you to get the answer that I know is there. If you'll allow it, it will be yes, dear one. And now you know. Why you sit in the chair? What brought you here? Why you're marginally interested? Why you're not sleeping at night? <laughs> Don't think I know who's here. <laughs> you see 11, 11 on the clock. How many of you go, thank you, God? Instead of going, I wonder what that means. I'm sure it's something negative. <laughs> Time to change that. There was a great master who walked the earth. His name was Christ. And everywhere he looked, he had compassion. And everywhere he looked, he saw synchronicity and solution. And everywhere he looked, he was loved. And people saw a love of God in him. And he gave you instructions, dear one. This master gave you instructions. He says, I am the son of God and so are you. So watch what I do because that's who you are. And that was for somebody in here who needed to hear it. Uh -huh. I know who's here. I'm family with you. I'm with you for the rest of your life. You can shut me out. Walk out the door. Shut me out. I'll walk right behind you. I'll never open my mouth and I'll never pester you. I'll never tap you on the shoulder except when you see 11-11. <laughs> That's the tap. That's the one that says you're an old soul. Get with it. You want it or not, it's going to change your life in such a positive way. How tolerant are you? in the traffic of Toronto. <laughs> I know who's here. <laughs> That's included. Can you bless them? When they cut you off, make gestures at you, yell at you? Can you bless them? God bless you, sir. I love you. Can you do it? If you can, dear one, you are practicing compassion. Practice compassion. Practice compassion. It'll change how you think. It'll change how you treat those around you you love the most. And even your enemies will eventually come to you and say, I don't know what's happened to you, but it isn't all that bad. <laughs> Pretty good. These are the things that change the dirt of the earth, the crystalline grid, the measuring system, all that is, which is planting the seeds for your children and their children and their children to have peace on this planet and not have another world war ever, 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 ever. That's what's at stake. You're right in the middle of the alignment, almost two decades to go. Some of you are saying, I don't think I'm going to last that long. I'm old. <laughs> I know who's here. I'm going to say, well, maybe you're right. But you know what? You're coming right back. So it doesn't make any difference. Because here is what is going on in the Akash. As this energy comes to fruition, dear old soul, and you remember who you are, and you take the initiative, and you spread light, when you come back, you will awaken with full knowledge. <laughs> and you're not going to have to go through what you went through this time ever again. Do you know that? That is the seed of an ascended planet. When you're born enlightened. And that is what we see here. And for those of you who say, I'm not coming back, this is the last one. <laughs> Uh, 
you wouldn't miss it. You're not going to miss the finale. <laughs> You're all coming back. You're not going to miss the finale. Imagine a planet that's in love with itself so that it never wars again. Imagine. That's who you are. That's what may be happening. That's why I love you the way I do. And so it is.